All right, guys, welcome back to Hobson's Choice Harleys. Today we're uh, continuing on with the 41 Knuckle, a goodies collection this morning. We've got generator bolts and cam bolts and breather assemblies and lower end case bolts, cylinder bolts, pinion shafts and races and spacers and thrust washers. So we're assembling all the parts for the bottom end. Uh, they're trickling in little by little. It's funny, I ordered 32 items to put that bottom end together on this thing. And so far I've gotten one a day, one in a box. So, you know, no wonder prices are so expensive on parts. So they couldn't put any of these 10 small packages in one box. I know they've got different warehouses. It just seems so crazy to me that I've had seven shipments out of 32 ordered parts. You know, I mean, the cardboard, the packaging, the shipping, no wonder I'm paying $1,300 for the parts to rebuild the bottom end on this bike. But what can you do? You gotta have the parts. So stay tuned today. We're gonna continue working on trying to get the brake system on this Invader wheel set up. Also gonna try and get this transmission pulled and maybe replace the front end. So we're just gonna be putzing around. It's a cold, windy, rainy day here in New Mexico. It's supposed to be snowing later on this afternoon. So it's a good day to not be out in the work trenches and to be playing around in the shop. We're trying to pull these invader wheel apart. I'm trying to get the mechanical brake system to fit on this invader wheel. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to use a juice brake drum and sprocket with the mechanical brake backing plate. My issue is there's no bearings on this side of the wheel in the mechanical brake setup. So the star hub has got a different bearing assembly. So to be able to use this invader, I've got to have the bearings in the hub. So that's kind of what I'm working on here today is playing with that and seeing if I can make it work. The tough part is that these bolts don't clear the spokes on the invader wheel. So the tough part on this is I had to build a little tool. So basically I'm using a half inch or a 7 16 nut as my Allen key because the shaft will clear in between the spokes. Then I've had to triple nut that and use the wrench on the lower nut. It's been a real nightmare. And then I got it all together and then it dawned on me that my bearing surfaces aren't gonna play right. So now I have to take it all back apart, put the other hub back on with this backing plate. So sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back. Today, that's kind of what's going on. So once we get these loosened, in fact, we'll have to take a little weight and put it on that wheel, just enough that you don't want to spin. Wow. I guess I got these tighter than I thought. Here's one, two. <laughs> so I didn't think this would be that big a deal because I put brand new colony nuts on all of these, but I also didn't think I was gonna have to take it apart. So I did crank them down quite a bit. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a wheel configuration not match the hub configuration on one of these old five, five bolt setups. Basically it's your star hub or your mid star pan head or generator shovel configuration. Um, so interesting, this old invader can tell a story. My little makeshift tool here, they keep loosening up on me. Hopefully this is the last time I gotta do this. In fact, I might hold off on putting this completely together until I get this wheel over to the shop. The local guy, Larry, does all my stuff that I can't do, which in this case is the tire. I don't have a tire machine and have no desire to get one. I know you can get cheapy one through Harbor Freight with the spoons that you can do that. You know, I do have a buddy that has one of those setups with the spoons. I don't wanna mess with it. I would rather just take it up there and say, slap a new Dunlop on there and be done with it. This tire, I didn't even date code it, but I know it's ancient. It looks decent, but I don't know. So my date code over here is 344. So is that an 04? I don't know. I'll have to look on VOT and see, but I don't think it's something I want to trust riding on. And the funny thing with this is, so I get these five bolts loose, and then I have to loosen them all in a sequence because they hit the spokes. So I can't just take the bolt out. I have to do, you know, a few turns at a time to even get these off. And it's funny, the chrome bolts that were in here are actually about 3 16ths of an inch longer than the colony bolts. It's all the same thread and stuff, but it's just interesting. Okay, so now I've got all those loose. Unfortunately, what I gotta do is I gotta pull this axle and spacer off 
where I can walk this wheel out as I'm loosening these the rest of the way. So that's the plan. So we're back at it. You see I've got this spacer out. So as I loosen these, I'm trying to leave the backing plate on the bike just long enough to get the wheel off. And then we're gonna see what we gotta do with it. We might have to create a couple of spacers to make this thing work, I'm not sure yet. Boy, that one's sure tough for whatever reason. Might have to run a tap through it and see what's going on. Close. What is it? Only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes. All right, so let's see what we're gonna do here. Unfortunately, the back of the plate has gotta come off. Okay, so here we go. There's our back of the plate. And there's the hub that we're trying to get off of. And as you can see, the bearings on a star hub are down inside the hub. The mechanical or juice brake, this is mechanical. The juice brake set up for 66 to 69 shovel. The bearings are actually in this hub. So I've got to replace these hubs. And I've been told that the mechanical brake hub will work in the juice brake vacuum plate. So my hope is to take two brake systems and combine them and make one functional brake system. So that's what we're attempting to do today. Luckily, in all my boxes of stuff, I did find a brand new set of brake shoes, mechanical flavored brake shoes. So if I can get this all together, even though it's a mechanical brake, it ought to do pretty well because it'll have brand new shoes. And the drum I'm using is actually in really pretty good shape. You see, I'm walking this around and doing about two revolutions per nut is all I can get. There's two, and three, four, and the proverbial last bolt that's always the funnest, there's five. Okay, so there we go. So we got our mechanical hub off and no bearings in it. And you can see there's no bearings on this side of that invader wheel. So I do have my stock three quarter inch sealed bearing here. But since there's not a bearing here, I have to use the other hub. Let me grab the other hub and show you what I'm trying to do. Okay, so this is, you would think is the same hub, same bolt pattern, same thickness. This hub actually has your bearings in the hub, not in the wheel hub, but in the drum hub. So that bearing will carry this side of the wheel, the bearing that's sealed on the other side carries the other, and I should be good to go. Now the condition with this is when I use this new setup, is, is my backing plate gonna sit in here? I think it's gonna fit in here, but my issue is going to be this spacer assembly between the two. If I put this on here, I've gotta get a custom spacer that'll fit that, because that one won't do it. Let me see if the stock one. So if you look here, see the difference in spacers? So these are all flat shelf to go through the frame. That's what holds your backing plate on the, on the motorcycle. This one's short because it's reaching the bearing in this one. This one's long because it would go all the way through that hub into the wheel, the spoked wheel over there. So I don't think either of these are gonna work. I think this one's too long and I think this one's too short. So that's my issue is to get a spacer in here to work. So let's just see, just for giggles, if I put that spacer in there, yeah, see, it's not long enough. So I'm gonna have to make up that difference inside there. So play some games with it and we'll figure it out. I might have to get my buddy with the lathe to cut me a spacer to take up basically from that space to that space. So it's about three quarters of an inch. I'll play with some of the spacers I've got, take some measurements, and we'll see what happens. So we got our wheel. I had to take it to a machinist buddy of mine. He's going to be cutting some spacers because I don't have a lathe. Uh, so he's going to cut me some spacers to get that back wheel in here. So we're going to move on to the transmission, see if we can't pull this transmission. I do want to pull the kicker and the ratchet top off of it to kind of see what things are going on in there. Once this is off, just from a weight standpoint, we'll probably pull this front end off up here and put the narrow glide front end and see how that fits. So here we go. We're gonna start playing with the transmission. All right. 
dropping sockets. And again, it's so rainy and cloudy today that I uh, have all the lights on in here, which I don't have power to run my compressor. So old school sockets is the way to go today. So we're gonna try and take the whole transmission plate out. And while it's out, I wanna play with the uh, oil bag and fender. This fender is made for this frame and it bolts here and it bolts here. And I just wanna have a good feel for that. So I'm not trying to figure that out when I get it back from paint. It's always good to have everything dry fit and familiar before you uh, try and assemble it, especially with fresh paint. And even then you still probably end up with a nick here or a ding there, but I'm gonna minimize that. And then once I get everything dry fit, I'm gonna take it all back apart and uh, go ahead and clean this frame up. I don't know if I'm gonna try and touch it up or if I'm just gonna go ahead and reshoot the whole, the whole thing. I hadn't quite decided, yet, but we'll figure it out one way or another. See, I wonder if this gets me high enough that I can. Not quite. Let's put all the extensions on there. What the hell? Somewhere I've got a 24 inch extension. I just don't know where it's at. Throwing tools. So these ones do have nuts on the back, which typically the transmission mount plate doesn't, but this is an aftermarket frame, which it's actually really close. It's got the brake crossover and stuff for mechanical brakes, but I think the plate and everything's just a little different than I'm used to on the shovel heads and the pan heads. So this is my first bike I've ever had with mechanical brakes to the rear. I've got my 69 with the juice brakes and my pan head had the juice brakes because it was a 62. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes together. I was gonna try, because I had a juice brake assembly to put it back there, but unfortunately the way the frames get, I would have to do so much modifications to the frame to make it work that I might screw it. We're gonna run mechanical. I'm gonna put hydraulic brakes. I got a PM caliper on the uh, narrow glide that I'm running on here. So that part will be hydraulic. Hopefully between the two, I can get this beast to stop once in a while. There you go, come on. Plus, I want to turn this transmission up and down and see what the date codes on it are. I was pleasantly surprised that all the codes, both the date codes and the casting marks and everything on the whole engine were all original 41 stuff. I don't know on this transmission. I know the top is not because it's a chrome cover top. I guess it could be, it just has been chrome, but typically a 41 wouldn't have had a chrome top. So this might be a newer style transmission. I mean, it's a ratchet top, the innards are all the same on them. And I know it's no newer than a pan head because we don't have the ears. So it is period authentic. I just don't know if it's 1941 authentic. So we're, gonna, we're about to find out. So we're gonna take some of the tension off of here. See if we can just slide her out if she's ready. I have to unhook that mouse trap. If you guys never played with one of those mouse traps, buyer beware, man. Those things will eat your fingers like nobody's business. That spring has got a hell of a lot of tension on it. So we're almost loose. What I did forget to do is take this linkage arm off. Let me see if there's a cotter pin or what's going on there. Yep, there it is. There's our pin, get this off. Okay, so we're back at it. I did just uh, unhook the linkage arm. And what else can I do? Oh, I've got the speedometer cable off of there. Free and clear it up. You know what? We're not. There is that last bolt under here. That's interesting. It's, uh, I don't think I did that, but it's barely finger tight in there. It's a good thing I decided to pull this and didn't try and run it. So hopefully we're, all right, so there's the transmission. She is free. Yeah, so more or less, this is the same. You're, you got your shelf here. It looks like a standard adjustable transmission mount plate on the bottom of the tranny. So nothing crazy different or new, just old school. We're gonna go ahead and pull the top off of this and see what the bottom looks like. I've still got the mounting plate and the adjustment plate on here. I probably can't 
So it's hard to tell. Let's see if I can lower this camera a little bit. So right here, we have 12135E7. So I'm gonna have to look that up and see what E7 is on that date code. Would that be 47? Hard to say. So we're gonna keep doing some research. We're gonna pull this plate off. We're gonna pull that kicker off. We're gonna pull the top off. And then we'll get you some pictures of what's going on down inside there. Okay guys, so we're back. I got the uh, bottom plate off of this. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the, the ratchet top first and just kind of do a look for what things look like in there. And all these bolts and washers and everything as they're coming off, I'm putting them in the bucket of the evapor rust because I want everything beautiful clean when it comes out. So this is just my little adjuster screw here. So that's gonna go in the bucket of sauce that I like to call it. We'll see, we might get a bunch of fluid. Sometimes that hole gets drilled all the way into the case. No, it does not. Okay, cool. All right, so here we go. Yeah, so good, bad, or indifferent. I think I'm lucky. But so far, nothing has really been seized up real tight. So the story on this machine is it was actually stolen out of California and recovered in New Jersey. So, and then during the time it, it had disappeared, the lady from California ended up moving to Texas. So it went from California to New Jersey, to Texas, to Colorado, and now to New Mexico. The story this thing could tell is kind of funny, man. I wish, I wish sometimes these old machines could talk. This one's been around a while. And luckily with that being stolen and bounced around and everything, it's about 99% here. You know, most of the stuff I'm having to buy, I would have had to buy no matter what, you know, the pinion shaft and the crank pin and the pilot shaft and all the bearings and gaskets and seals. I mean, all that stuff on an 80 plus year old bike, if you're gonna go through it, it's all gotta be replaced anyway. So far, I haven't had to buy anything. You know, every time I turn around, I'm finding something. Today, I found the spring and the linkage attachment for the brake lever, brake light switch, so that when you do the mechanical brake, it opens that switch and lets the uh, brake light come on. So it's like, you know, stuff like that that I just continually keep finding. A lot of fun, it's kind of cool, kind of dissecting it. I think I'm driving my buddy Doc crazy. Doc is, uh, most of you guys probably know Doc Wilbon. He's up in Colorado and he's kind of like my mentor. He's uh, an amazing mechanic and just knowledge of all things Harley. So there's a lot of these things that I take pictures of and send it to him and say, what is it? And I I've yet to stump him. One of these days I'm gonna stump him, but so far today ain't the day. That top hole, watch. See the dirt come flying out of there? So those two holes are just packed full of dirt and grime. So chances are this whole transmission is gonna have to come apart. Luckily, I've been through a few ratchet tops, so that's not a huge deal. The stuff I'm waiting on is help on the uh, bottom end. So I've done a lot of work on bikes for a lot of years. I've never rebuilt a bottom end. So I'm actually going to go to school with Doc Wilbon up in Colorado, and he's gonna help me true these flywheels. We're bartering some money and some parts and just all the stuff it takes to make this thing go together right. I didn't want to experiment on an 83 year old knucklehead bottom end. That's when I needed some really expert knowledge and then depending on how that goes, I might end up buying a truing stand because I've got motors laying all over the place. And now I'm at a place in life that I can play out in the garage and ding around a little bit and maybe uh, build some motors. That's the plan. If I can find a decent machine shop that I trust. Well, can't see what's going on with that bolt yet. Can't even tell which way the slot on the screw is. Try a little smaller screwdriver. There it is. Ah, I think I got it. So I know on a lot of the shovel heads, people have replaced these top screws with Allen head screws, but I don't think any of this has been done. I just can't see it because of all the grunge and grind. So. All right guys, so we got it off. That one screw that was really buried in there. Let's see if we can get those two to drop out. There's that one and that one. So those are the top case screws. We're gonna go in the sauce. Just got it off, let's see what we got here. So this is, looks like 5.2. So that's not to say the case is, the case has an E7 on it. So I think it's a 47, and this is probably a 52 ratchet top. But boy, everything looks perfectly clean in here. That transmission 
is in really clean, clean condition. Speedometer gear here is clean. Get this old gasket out of the way before it falls in there. Get that out of the way. Our forks lined up. Wow, okay. So no bent forks, no chewed up teeth. I'll check the end play, but the end play is minimal. So regardless, I will pull the kicker apart. I'll pull the speedo drive gear apart. Probably pull the, the nut off it and make sure that the seal back here is good. Flush everything thoroughly three, four, or five times and then button it all back up and seal it back up. First initial look, impressive. And it is full of oil, which I'm surprised. So I'm going to uh, find my drain pan, go ahead and uh, drain the fluid out of here, see if I've got some kerosene or something to get started on cleaning this out with it. Okay, so I did bring in the uh, drain pan. I went ahead and pulled the kicker off. Yeah, it's in pristine condition. So the oil in here is like factory new, right out of the court. So my suspicion is, like I had mentioned before, this bike had been stolen and recovered up in New Jersey. The gas tank still had fuel lines and the petcock holes all wrapped in masking tape from when it had been painted. So they never had gas in it. I think this transmission had been gone through and they just put gear oil in it, but it's never been run. It's, I mean, it, you swear you just poured this right out of the court. The gaskets still had the printing on them and they pulled right off. They weren't even seized to the case, which is good. That's gonna very much minimize. I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything but flush this and put some new gaskets and be good to go on it. So we'll finish cleaning this mess up, cleaning this mess up. And then we're gonna look at, uh, try and get that front end off of this frame and see if one of my narrow glide, I've got a narrow glide with a invader front wheel that matches the invader I'm putting back here. So we're gonna slap that under there and see what the stance looks like. So stay tuned, keep watching, there's more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also comment what you guys think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for video ideas or topics you guys want covered and I'll do my best to include those in my next projects. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out the Beacons link in the description below. See you next time.